Hey everybody, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we have Peter Grandich of Peter Grandich & Company. He's joining us today to answer some of our questions about the Fed's next move, the layoffs in the tech sector, the possibility of the end of the petrodollar, battery metals, China, gold, and be sure to stay tuned to the end to hear his advice for new investors. Hey, Peter, welcome back to The Dive. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. Okay, so let's start off with some macro. The vice chair of the Federal Reserve recently said that interest rates need to remain high despite a recent decline in inflation. What do you think is the Fed's next move? Well, in their latest minutes that we had from their last meeting, they went out of their way to knowing that we're going to read and hear this, that it would be a mistake on the financial markets part to prejudge that they're about to switch from a tightening to a loosening policy. And uh, so I think that was a clear shot across the board for all those down Wall Street who think they're suddenly going to take their foot off the pedal and slam it on the gas pedal. Uh, that That's just not in the cards. The inflation is a lot higher than even the current numbers that we see. They know it. And so while they may not do 75 or 100 basis points. So we don't have to worry about those anymore. I don't think they're about to stop. I think they're going to steal. They keep talking about a 5% rate. And even some of the dubs are talking about that. So that must still be their number. And somebody's got it wrong because the bond market has rallied tremendously. And yet the Fed is talking about higher interest rates. But I think the bond market's rallying because they realize that we're going to have a fairly deep recession. And that eventually, you know, uh, rates are going to fall back down again, not to the levels that they were when this all started, but not not near 5%. Now, in the latest round of layoffs in the technology sector, Google is cutting 12,000 jobs worldwide. What do you think about this as an investor? Well, the employment picture is a, is a little bit different based on the last report. They would want us to believe, based on the payroll numbers, that employment was still fairly strong. The problem was most of the gain in that payroll was from part-timers. And in the payroll counting, if I needed to have three jobs now in order to support my family and I work three part-time jobs, even though it's one person, they will count that as three people employed. And so a lot of the part-time work made up that payroll. And so it's not anywhere strong. And of course, we're seeing it not only with Google, but many household names and many small businesses reporting having to, to lay off. So but all in all, this this has all the earmarks of a recession here in 2023. Okay, now shifting gears here, Saudi Arabia's finance minister said that the kingdom is open to discussions about trade in currencies other than the U.S. dollar. Do you think that we're seeing the end of the petrodollar? Well, it's something that I've been talking about and I haven't been alone about to, if you want to not call it the demise of the dollar, but at least a challenge to the dollar of being the world reserve currency. For a couple of years now, openly, the BRIC nations have talked about possibly trading without using the dollar and using some sort of commodity slash gold backed currency. Saudi Arabia, which is kind of mentioned it was interested in joining the BRIC nations. I don't know if they will or not the very fact that they're speaking that way. And I think that's one of the best things, and I don't want to jump ahead because you might have a question about gold, but I think it's one of the reasons that the gold market has been so strong because we've seen such strong central bank buying of gold, and they're not buying to speculate. They must be buying because they recognize some sort of change is coming worldwide monetarily. It may not be this year, but they want to be prepared for it. So I think it's real for the Saudi to consider that. And it didn't help the way uh, Biden went over there and some of the things he said and did. And uh, so I, I don't see them anywhere near the ally, if they ever were, that they were 10 or 20 years ago to the United States. What about China? Do you think that the petro yuan can overthrow the U.S. in the oil market? Well, the yuan would have to become free floating. It's still pegged to the dollar. So even if they start using the yuan, unless they make it free floating and not pegged to the U.S. dollar. But the interesting thing was I was really high on 
China being part of this coming gold back slash commodity back currency. But China now has entered a problem that clearly Japan and U.S. and some other nations have, and that's this aging population in a crisis with retirement and having more people on retirement than working. And so China now is also facing not only that, but it's actually facing somewhat surprisingly internal disruption that many people thought we'd never see. And uh, we're seeing that also in Iran. We're seeing it in Tehran where women are not wearing the heads and also these totalitarian regimes are finding it more difficult in the 21st century uh, to keep a hard clamp on people. But that, to answer your question is, I think China will eventually look to do something or be part of something like that. They certainly are not an ally of ours, and they don't have any real need to see the U.S. dollar staying strong. It's not in their best interest. So Saudi Arabia will establish a firm to invest in mining assets around the world including iron ore, copper, nickel, and lithium. Do you think that we will start to see more countries invest in battery metals abroad? Well, I think all minerals are going to be in need. If we're going to do all these things that they're speaking about in Davos and have all these electrical cars and electrical this, the need for minerals has grown rapidly, and there has not been a, a lot of money spent in the last couple of decades that might have previously been spent in order to find these great deposits. So it's not surprisingly everybody that in these countries are realizing, well, hey, we gotta go out and, and get some of these minerals. Now with a real problem, there's twofold. One, 30 years ago, you could have spin a globe, put your finger on a country and say, yeah, it's okay, we can go there. Not anymore. Uh, mining is becoming more and more difficult in certain countries. We're seeing troubles in Peru, uh, we just saw in Panama them suddenly raise a royalty from a couple percent to 20 percent. So major mining companies are going to think twice where they're going to go. And I think that brings us back to North America. The other problem is rare minerals. These very hard to say names that most people don't know or what they do, but they're needed. China basically has a control of them. And they're not going to, in their best interest, give them to us amply without something coming back in return. So the Saudis recognize that their days of oil will come and go, and they need to do other things. And so I suspect we're going to see not only the Saudis, but other countries spend more time not only looking for minerals, but developing projects internally that they might have let other come in and develop it themselves. Which of these minerals do you think are the best positioned to profit from the EV transition? Well, my favorite doesn't mean it's the best. It's my favorite is copper. Copper is just, when you say copper and you say electricity, that, that goes hand in hand. And so we're going to have all this electrical stuff, even though here in the U.S., the the grid is so old, some of it was installed by Thomas Edison. I, I joke about that, but it's okay. really that old. And uh, if we're going to have all these cars that are going to need le electricity, the grid right now has difficulty in the middle of the summer providing electricity to where there's brownout and blackouts. But copper for electricity, cobalt obviously for everybody, writing, lithium, some people call lithium the new oil. Uh, so most of these, and, and that's why the commodities market is rising even though strength in the world is not. The economies around the world are, are not strong and normally commodities would decline. But there's a great need for them, and there's a there's really not an ample supply. And uh, you know, copper fits that mode well, and that's why I think it's been doing really well. BHP, the world's largest mining company, said China would act as a stabilizing force for commodity demand this year. What is your read on China's economy? Well, the 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 expectation is we'll see if it works out, but the expectation is by this insane zero COVID policy that they had uh, being put aside, the economy will get back to more of a, of a growth stage. There's some questions to that because they have some internal issues uh, about that, but their needs still are great. And also the world needs are great. And people forget about a country called India. It's not quite there yet, but if you go back to China of 40 years ago, that's where India may be. 
And one of the things to start to look for is uh, India becoming uh, a, a growth economy and, and need of stuff. So all around the world, minerals uh, are needed. And uh, there's just no question about it that that's why they have managed to go up here, even though economies, especially the U.S., is slipping. Okay, now let's come back to gold here. A few weeks ago, Mark Cuban called gold investors dumb as beep during his interview. What are your thoughts on this? Well, I actually put that up on my tweet post and said, I guess I must be one of those dumb. And, <laughs> uh, you know, people forget about a year or two ago how he roared about cryptocurrencies across the board, and most of them got killed, and he said the same thing about gold then. Meanwhile, excuse me, Gold has done real well, and we all know what's happened in the cryptocurrency market. But he's a you know he's a famous billionaire. He likes to speak. He'll always get covered no matter what he says. And I always say I'd rather see people like that talking negatively than getting positive behind it because the regular financial world treats gold as kryptonite. It, it, they, they don't want to go near it because it really flies in the face of paper assets doing well. So... I, I, I want them to keep not liking it, but eventually you want them to come in because that's towards the end because you're going to want to eventually sell to somebody, and uh, but they're not there yet. So I don't I don't pay heed to it. I know that, you know it gets attention for him, and you know, I'm sure he loves attention. It seems to be that type of a man, but I don't worry about him what his opinion is about gold. There's a lot more people I'd be more concerned about their opinion about gold than his. Earlier on here, you mentioned central banks buying gold at record levels. Could you expand on that a bit? Why do you believe central banks are increasing their gold purchases? Do you believe that they are anticipating a crisis? Well, they're anticipating something more than speculating. They're not buying it to trade it and then flip it out. Uh, some have argued it may only be one or two countries, China being one of them. But irregardless, the, the amount of gold that they have purchased, particularly in the last year, clearly says that there's a reason other than speculation. Now, some of us think it's because they recognize that there's going to have to become something done with this world debt crisis. And eventually, something other than the full faith and credit of the United States dollar is going to have to be in charge or, or, or an alternative. And so I, I just think that they recognize, as people have for a couple thousand years, that gold is a true store of value, is real money, and uh, they recognize it's going to be important to have it. And, th and that's one of the main reasons gold is rallied, because of what they have done. So, Peter, what advice do you have for young investors learning to invest in a market with these kinds of conditions? Be very careful. Uh, you know, you don't have to be young to have gotten hurt. I was a guy that supposedly made a lot of right calls last year, but I still managed to lose money in some markets. And so it's not as easy as buy low and sell high. And it takes a lot of experience. And also, I think markets are just going to be much more tougher now. We don't have the Kool-Aid that was being provided by the Fed and, and abilities to print trillions of dollars. We, we, they're really coming to the point now in the U.S. where we just can't keep making the debt level go up without some sort of actions. So I would tell them, Approach it slow and easy, and you know what? Uh, save if you can, and don't fall into this debt mentality. We have a mentality now where we watch commercials where some entertainer or, or some comedian will go, look, I made, I saved 5% using this card. Meanwhile, the 95% that he spent to buy the item to, to use that 5%, we have this mentality. I just have this attitude that less is more, so I would tell them, uh, to go slow and recognize it, we're going to be in for some challenging times. The easy days are behind us. So before we let you go here, Peter, could you let our audience know where they can go to hear more from you? Well, petergranich.com, that's the website where there's a blog, and I'm also at Twitter at Peter Grandage. Awesome. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Peter. We'll hopefully talk to you again soon. Thank you for having me again. God bless. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We will be back again tomorrow with another exciting interview. So be sure to stay tuned by hitting that notification bell and subscribing below so you don't miss it. Bye.